got a different project up on the bench today. Um, I got this camera for Christmas, this backup camera, <clears throat> and I um, have been want, been thinking about a way to mount it. I've got a 2003 um, 2500 uh, GMC Yukon. The thing is massive. It's big. Um, I love that rig. It's awesome. Um, It's got a lot of windows in it, you can see when you're backing up, but sometimes um, it would be nice to have a backup camera to let you know how close you're getting to, you know, something. You know, that, that is a big rig, and turning around like on a, um, you know, up on those forest service roads sometimes when they come to the end and you're not expecting it, or, you know, there's some reason you need to turn around, you know, in the middle of the road up there in the woods. Um, it would be nice to have this backup camera, this backup camera to... Um, you know to see it was designed to mount on your license plate so you'd sandwich this behind your license plate right your license plate would be here your license plate bolt right and I've turned the bracket around I removed it and flipped it around because I've got an idea I was just wondering if it would work um, I don't want to permanently wire this into the cab or you know into the cabin or inside the Yukon um, I want to keep everything external if I can so I've I've got an idea um, the camera itself has a, um, a suction cup mount and a, a cigarette lighter for the power so this is tripped by the backup lights and on that uh, Yukon it's got the seven pin round which has the backup light in the center and there is a ground on it so if I get the connector so my so if I get the connector I can plug that into the trailer <clears throat> into the trailer wiring so I don't have to modify any of the water wiring on the Yukon and uh, be easy to remove if you need to and my thought was um, I had a, uh, a Jeep a 2002 Jeep Wrangler um, I, I like that rig for the most part, but, uh, I won't go into the story of why I got rid of it, but I'll just, I'll never own another Jeep, unless it's an old flat fender, right? Something old. Um, but I had a way, I needed a way to carry, um, game, you know, if I went hunting and shot a deer or, or a bear or an elk or something, I, I had to have a way to carry the, you know, the, the animal home. So I bought one of those um, cargo carriers that um, pin into the receiver hitch. And that, that thing worked great, you know. So if I was uh, needed to, you know, to haul something that wouldn't fit inside the rig or was too greasy or dirty or, you know, bloody or whatever. So I used it quite often, but I never, it came with this. I bought it at Harbor Freight and it came with this and it has a reflector. In it and it stuck out too far and I just seen I would just bang my leg on it right when I came around <clears throat> so my thought was um, maybe I could mount this camera in this and the wiring could run out the back and plug in and if I wanted to remove it it's easy to remove so long explanation so um, this piece was pinned in there this was pinned in there with this and I just um, used my, um, I, I, you know, I just drove this out. It pulls right out, okay? So my thought is that obviously this is too wide to fit inside there. So my thought is to cut it right here and then inset it so it sits in there just about a quarter of an inch back. So it's protected, right? This isn't sitting out getting smacked around. And then you could drill a hole here for like a number. I was thinking number four because this isn't super thick, but it's thick enough for a number six or even a number eight. Maybe even a number 10 machine screw. So you drill the hole and tap it on this side and then drill a half inch hole over here or three eighths hole over here so you can get in there with the screwdriver and tighten it down. So, 
And I thought, you know, it would be nice to have a set of tap and dies, you know, here on the workbench too. So I went to um, Lowe's, and this is what they had, but it was supposed to come with the tap handle. And I was um, heading up to the checkout, and I was looking, you know, reading it as, as I was walking, and I go, oh, tap handle. It's freaking missing. Tap handle's missing. So <clears throat> I got a discount on this. I got $10 off on that. And I figure um, this could work as the tap handle pretty well. So... And maybe even I might have a socket small enough that I could use the quarter inch drive to drive it in maybe. So I'm not worried about not having the tap handle. And I, I thought $10 off on this was a pretty good deal. Um, so the two measurements a guy's going to need once he cuts this off, cuts it off here, is the distance. Figure out how far back you want and then measure... You know, measure from the f from here to the hole, and then measure from here. You know, mark your center, pop the hole. Same thing on the bottom side. Pop the hole. Put the screw in. So I've got. I think I got number fours here. Yeah, I think I've got some number four. Yeah, four forties, and I think I got some six. Yeah, six thirty twos. So I might use the six thirty twos. They're gonna, cause I only want to put one. And I think I got some blue Loctite around here. I can Loctite them in. I also got some uh, number six lock washers. And this is all stainless, so it won't rust. It'll be easy to remove. My concern is this, this connector here to the rest of the harness that's still in here. And we'll get to that. But I'm thinking I could put some uh, dielectric grease and then put some heat shrink over it. It should protect it. Because I think this was designed to be connected in the cabin of the vehicle. So I don't think these electrical connections were designed to be out in the weather. Um, yeah. So I think dielectric grease and, and heat shrink is probably going to be the way to go on this. And as far as mounting the cab, the camera inside the vehicle, like I said, it's got a suction cup. So. And my other thought too is maybe um, could use a cell phone um, vent mount. One of these magnetic holders. They come with the... Um, uh, a small piece of steel, a thin piece of steel that's got uh, uh, like a decal. So you can put it on the back of whatever, your cell phone or whatever. So that might work too for mounting it. We'll see. Because I think during the summertime, the suction cup sitting on the window might not be so good. They tend to melt and just like turn into crap too. So um, I'm going to um, start doing some measurements. At first, I should probably cut this off. Yeah, I'll cut this. I'll go cut this off with the hacksaw real quick. That won't. That'll be super easy. Just pull that screw out right here. So this kind of. I'll just pull that screw out, and then I can go hold on to this and just cut that off with the hacksaw. And then I'll come back in and we'll lay out where we're gonna put the hole, and then I'll um, drill the holes, tap it, mount it, and wire it. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I still got to get the the plug connector for the um, trailer connector, the round seven pin female side. I don't think I have one. I think all I have are four flat um, adapters. I don't think I have a, a seven pin round connector for that yet. So I guess my other the other thought is to um, cut this off. And cut the connector off on the other one and solder them and then heat shrink it. But I think the dielectric grease and heat shrink over the connector probably will be, be pretty good. Make sure I use the heat shrink that's got the glue in it. So, Alright, we're going to get, I'll get to work here and uh, I'll come back and show you as the prog project progresses. Well, I got the bracket cut off and a hole drilled in it. And I kind of estimate, uh, kind of just uh, took my old plastic calipers. So I'm thinking from the lens, 
to the center of the hole, right, is less than, it's like an inch and seven eighths, inch and seven eighths or so. So I'm kind of figuring if we inset it um, two inches, if we drill the hole two inches in, we're going to have this lens back in there, but not being, I don't think far back enough that the lens is going to see the edges of the, of the tube. So to mark that, um, I set the calipers at two inches and I, if you can see, yeah, you can see that. Set the caliper at two inches from here to here and I just scraped it. I don't know if you guys know this trick with these, these calipers are machine, machine, um, hardened steel, these, the jaws of the caliper. So this is a, I believe this is two inches. So one inch is dead center. So if you, you can just use the caliper to scrape the paint. And, I, and this works on bare steel too. Just scrapes it in there nice and easy. Perfect. And then, uh, so I'll take a center punch and I'll drill a hole and I will use this drill bit set and tap set for 632. 632, so I'll use this drill bit and this tap. And then the other side I'll probably drill a... Uh, a 3 8 hole that should be big enough for a number number two Phillips screwdriver number two Phillips let's see yeah number two this is about quarter inch so 3 8 of an inch hole yeah it's not gonna be a problem be plenty of clearance for the head too, I believe. Yeah, three eighths should just give us enough room. <clears throat> I like these calipers because I don't have to do any math in my head. Yeah, quarter inch. So three eighths, that's gonna give us that much room. We'll have that much clearance in the hole, no problem. Three eighths is the way to go. So I'll drill a three eighths hole on the back side of that. And when I get that done, I'll come back and we'll see how it mounts in there and how it looks. Well, I got the it <laughs> I don't know if you can really see it or not got the camera mounted in there got the holes drilled in it now I just got to cut this off somehow I'll figure it out but the camera is mounted in there so this will slide in it'll pin and this sticks just just a little bit out of the receiver hitch and then we can do the wiring here in the back still <clears throat> I will say it is a pain to get that started but it is possible I, I actually did it so not that big a deal so there it is mounted in there it's protected it can't get hit so and this isn't gonna stick very far out of the stinger like I said I I think it's like a quarter of an inch or something. Not going to bang my leg on it when you walk by. Most of this is going to be inside of the receiver hitch. So, yeah, kind of a pain to do, but I think worth the extra effort. I think this could be a good way to, to mount it, and it could move to another vehicle if it's got the seven-round pin connector because this... because this uses a um, cigarette lighter connection so the whole thing's movable to other vehicles you know so if I ever get another uh, you know another vehicle if something happens to that rig God forbid um, and I got to get a, a different rig I'll just have to maybe change the connector on the end I don't know but we'll see how this works 
Now I got to get the uh, <clears throat> uh, the connector to fit that seven round pin, and then uh, we'll show you the rest of the wiring and and the such. I thought about for a little while maybe cutting a hole in the end of this, but the camera, because this pins on all the way through. Where's that pin? There it is. Because this pins on all the way through, it could, I couldn't do it. It would be kind of cool if there was a hole cut there, you know, and the camera would sit right on the back side of it, you know, up smooth. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it open like that. Well, I needed to shorten the wiring for the camera because there's a lot of stuff that needs to go in here that's going to be inside of this. <clears throat> so I've cut a bit of cable out of the out of here. And this is going to be long enough to go. It's going to just stick out the back. Just good enough to hook it up. And then when I push it back in there with the other wiring, um, it w I'm hoping it won't interfere with the pin. Because I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to cable manage inside of this tube very well. Without welding something in there. And I don't want to do that. So this is what I'm going to do. I've shortened this and um, this heat shrink has the glue in it and it'll slide past that connector will slide in there so I'll be able to slide it on once I get all of this soldered together and then this will be one piece it's gonna be a lot stiffer so I'm hoping it'll push this to the side when I shove it in there this will go to the side I hope it does either way I think it's gonna clear this this hole for the cross pin I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. If I have to, I can glue it down in there somehow. I'll figure it out. So I'm going to glue this together and I'll be back. Um, the soldering iron is warming up right now. And I will uh, solder these wires together and I'll get this all heat shrunk and I'll bring you back and show you that. And then we'll mount the cam camera in here. And then I'm going to have to do some finagling here because this thing is definitely not waterproof. And I'll take, we'll take this apart and look and see what's in here. I think it's some sort of filter. It's the only thing I can figure. I got um, the wire we'll soldered together. Not the greatest job, but it's done. And I have my doubts if this is going to work. This has got to be some of the smallest coaxial cable I've ever messed with. I mean, it's small. Um, so I'm going to slide a piece of heat shrink back on here, but I wanted to kind of give you a an idea on how small that coaxial cable is. That stuff is small. I mean this stuff's pretty pretty small wire anyway. <clears throat> but that's that's pretty small. I'm pretty sure all of it's gonna fit under uh, this piece of heat shrink here. Make this wider. I'm pretty sure it's gonna all slide down and cover the whole thing with heat shrink so it's short enough that I'll have a lot more room in there and we'll have clearance for the pin to go through I, th I think this is gonna work pretty good um, when I get it all done and installed in there uh, we'll have a look and see how how it turned out here be back in a few Well, I wanted to show you what was in this little box. Um, this plugs into the camera. It says camera on it and then um, 12 volt and then the antenna, the transmitter. So I'm assuming this is some sort of filter because the other end of this wire here is the power supply that's supposed to connect to um, a ground source and then this goes to your backup lights which they're calling 12 volt in but this should be hooked to your backup lights so when you put it in reverse it turns the camera on and then that triggers the um, uh, video display to come on to uh, start displaying the camera images so 
I thought you might want to look in here and see what's in it so I didn't want it to fall out but that's just the way it is um, I know it's upside down but it looks like an electrolytic and this is an electrolytic and this um, looks like some sort of inductor I'm not sure what that is and then there's um, some small capacitors maybe a small resistor and then an LED hmm I'm not sure what this is but this you know this to me it appears to be some sort of uh, you know filter I'm not sure though uh, my plan is is to put some um, let's get back out so my plan is is to seal this up with um, silicone with some electronics um, safe sensor safe silicones because I know that some of the um, silicones that we were using at work to start with on the computers to seal up the LMI systems on the cranes because it freaking rains here every day in the winter time and for hours you know for days on end so we're having a lot of wa water ingress problems into the um, believe it or not they mounted the um, motherboards of the LMI systems outside the cab of the crane on the counterweight so it was sitting out in the weather in this box and they started siliconing them up and that's that got rid of the water a lot of the water ingress but there was a lot of corrosion problems with um, the exposed um, copper that was in those on those motherboards and in that box <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was you know water you know the just the moisture in there um, some guys put light bulbs in there you know like an 1157 so when the crane was powered on there was a light bulb in there um, making heat and kind of drying things they made a vent kit for the box but there was always water problems in those things and um, I think some of the silicones they were using the off gassing of the silicone was corrosive to the copper and once we started using oxygen sensor safe silicone um, a lot of the copper corrosion problems we were seeing went away it could be coincidence I don't know but the manufacturer did listen to us and started mounting the um, motherboard for the LMI which is the load moment indicator for the crane inside the cabs get it out of the weather so it was a great improvement when they moved them inside the cab of the crane so well anyway um, yeah my plan is is to seal this up with some silicone and then I'll fold this up and I'll use some double-sided tape to put these two together and I don't think I'm going to put double-sided tape inside there I'll figure some way to to keep it in there I think I have a pretty good idea on how to do it and I'll uh, let you know if it works and I'll show you before I put this on the uh, truck and fully engaged and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this I was looking at the the trailer plug I got. I checked. And this will slide. See there's no sides on it like I was saying before. This will slide through the um, receiver tube. So I can have all this wired and slide it through. Bring this around and plug it in plug it into the trailer connection so I'll have my reverse and my ground in this so what I'm gonna use some SO cable so I can keep this sealed up because this wire is never gonna seal on this so I'll use some SO cable um, and then I'll use some heat some of the um, the glue infused heat shrink to seal it to this and then hopefully the silicone will seal this I'm hoping all this I mean it's it's like farting in the wind sometimes to try and keep water out of these um, connectors you know but hopefully it's gonna be far enough up inside that receiver that it won't be in the spray of the tires really but you will get the 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 um, low pressure spray coming back up under the under the vehicle always 
So I'm hoping this will at least delay it for a few years. You know, at least two, maybe three years I'll be able to use this. And it will be removable. So if you want to plug, you know, if you want to tow a trailer with the vehicle, it's not going to be a problem. You'll be able to just unplug this, pull the pin, pull it out, pull this through the receiver, throw it in the back, put your, um, you know, your ball hitch stinger on and connect to your trailer and go. So when I tow the boat, we're good to go. All right, I'll come back when I get all this done. Might not be till tomorrow because I want this silicone to set up for 24 hours at least. Well, I think I got her complete except for one more thing. I got to cut that screw off here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it sticks up a little bit high. I think I can just take a hacksaw and cut it off. It's not going to be a problem. If it's a little bit tall after I cut it with the hacksaw, I can file it. It'll be okay. Um, I think I got it done. I got the SO cable connected. The SO cable. I had to put some heat shrink on it because my two wire SO cables were a little bit smaller than this. But you know, this thing's not waterproof anyway. And you've got a low spot here, so it's going to sit in there level. If any water gets in it, it's going to come in here and probably drip out of this. I'm hoping it won't fill up. It'd have to be, you know, going through some deep water or something. And if that's going to happen, I'd probably pull this off before I, like, forge it a creek or a river or something or a pond or if I got that deep. But the camera, the camera's in there. I'll, I'll remove that after I get it installed. Um, the electrical and everything's stuffed in there. Not, not too awful bad. It's hard to, I know it's hard to see, but... And this is going to keep it from coming out this end here. So, and it's you really can't move it anyway. It's kind of jammed in there. So I'm I'm pretty pretty good with this installation. I have not plugged it into the truck yet. Um, one of my concerns is um, the Yukon is so long, and then this is going to be the the antenna is going to be outside the body. Um, it may not work a hundred percent or every time, or it could be maybe like a fuzzy picture, you know, maybe some interference. I'm going to go and find out. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I know that on some of our service trucks at work, you know, they were, um, like FL seventies with a huge service body on them, single axle. And they put backup cameras on a couple of them as an experiment to see if they could um, prevent some backing up accidents. I, it didn't happen very often. I didn't think it was justified. But they used these wireless cameras, and, oh, a similar type wireless camera. And uh, it worked, but it was there was a lot of interference from the backup alarms. I, I always thought it was the backup alarms, but I don't know. And they were inconsistent. Sometimes they would come on, sometimes they wouldn't. So, But I'm going to go try this and see how it works. And I'll report back to you and then we'll go take a look, see if it works. Well, here it is installed. The cable just comes out the back there, a couple of zip ties. I just zip tied it in for now just to see how well it works. Seems to be working pretty good. I'm just showing the, the install. Camera works good. My Yukon has a little little flat shelf here and the suction cup thing on the bottom fit right in there. Mm -hmm. 